All right, so in this video, we're going to be going over the head fundamentals. So the first thing I like to do is I like to set up where the brows are going to be sitting, which is right above the ears. And then the eyes are going to be somewhere in the middle part of the, the head. Uh, and then I start to kind of push in the forehead area to make the uh, face a little bit more narrow than the back of the head. Um, this just gives the proportions of the head a little bit more realism um, and then I start to make sure that the jaws are um, going in a V shape towards the chin you always want to make sure that you're getting that kind of uh, shape in there and we're just kind of slightly nudging in where the nose is going to be uh, and then I use the mask um, with the M key to um, be able to kind of bring out a basic nose that's going to be uh, usually, typically, you know, like obviously the nose shape where it's going to be kind of like a uh, point at the end, the tip of the nose, and then it's going to kind of come into the the bridge, upper brow area. Uh, so now we're just using the uh, draw sharp to kind of get these landmarks in there. Again, you want to kind of like draw in landmarks so that you have kind of like a base to start off with. Don't start going into details right away. Just kind of like make those landmarks... Um, and then try to visualize what you're doing with the face, okay? If you don't have any references, I don't have any references with this, so I'm just basically um, penning it in, all right? So here we have kind of like the typical shape of the nose where it kind of, you know, from the brows, it kind of like um, branches out and then it goes into like this trapezoid shape as it's going towards the base of the nose. Now we have the brow at a three-quarter view. The cheek is gonna be the most prominent at this angle. And then it's going to kind of slope down into the chin. Um, this is more common in stylized females. With uh, more realistic females, you might want to have like a kind of wider uh, jaw. But it's usually more narrow as it gets to the chin from the brow point. So here I am kind of pushing in the, uh, the brows a little bit more than the cheeks. So that we can kind of uh, get that kind of shape going on. Um, this is all just landmarks, by the way. This is not final anatomy. I always love to do this when I am... Um, getting, uh, see, as you can see right here, I'm making a line from the cheeks to the mouth. That's just to visualize the facial planes. Um, and then I indent the eyes inwards to kind of give a, an idea as to, you know, give it, give it a little bit of life, um, for the female. Here I am pushing the corners of the mouth back and then pushing the, the upper part of the mouth corners out. Um, this is establishing that the mouth upper part is going to be, uh, is going to be sitting over the bottom lips. Um, and then you're going to kind of make these indentions that I'm drawing on the screen right now. You're going to make these indentions where the uh, facial planes are going to be. And by facial planes, I mean that those are going to be flat surfaces that are going to kind of come to like points. So if you know anything about art or um, drawing or anything like that, you know what I mean by facial planes. It's basically just um, cutting in those areas to establish... Um, where those changes are going to be in the face. And again, we're just making basic shapes right here. We're not trying to go full out at this point. We're just kind of blocking in facial shapes um, to see what we like and what we don't like. You know, like, don't go into detail too quickly. Here I'm just making some basic nostrils, making a basic uh, nose, pushing the muscle structure of her uh, nose backwards a little bit just to kind of flatten out that face in the cheek area from the profile view. Um, and then again, like right here, I'm widening up the bridge a little bit more to make it more feminine, uh, more appealing, and bringing out those cheeks a little bit more. I want those cheeks to be more prominent. I want the upper part of the lip to be more prominent and upwards, kind of like it's making the mouth slope down um, towards her chin. And we're bringing out the tip of the nose. All of this is just basic, very basic block in. Kind of like establishing the cheeks and the jawline. And we're using the very low resolution of the geometry to establish our, our lip planes so that we can kind of refine those a little bit later on. ever so slightly moving the jaw inwards just to establish that she has a little bit more of a jaw rather than a neck. So she's very petite. And right here, I'm kind of just nudging the eyes down a little bit more, making sure that those eyes are sitting at the 
center of the head rather than too far up or too far down. You want them to be laying in the center. So you want those eyelids, um, technically they're closed right now. You want those closed eyelids to be technically kind of in the center of the head. All right, so here we are raising the resolution of the mesh and going in and kind of just establishing a little bit more softer planes. That's going to help us uh, establish more of a facial structure for the female. And I'm looking at this from all angles, all right? You don't want to look at this from like side, quarter, you know, top, down. You want to look at this from very weird angles because when you look at people, they're not always going to be looking at you from the front or the side or you know, at a three quarter view, they're going to be, you know, you're going to see people in all kinds of different angles. So you want to kind of establish that this is a face from every which way. So that's what I'm doing. I'm looking at it at very weird angles sometimes to get very um, more, more accurate results with the anatomy. Here I am just kind of making this like kind of swooping motion with the nose where it's kind of like the, the midsection of the nose and then it kind of swoops into the um, the nostril area. We'll be going a little bit more over how I do the nostrils a little bit later on in the video. But again, all of this is just me pushing the nostrils in, giving it a little bit of a slight appeal, puffing out the nostril outside, or outer nostril uh, cartilage a little bit, and establishing that nose plane. Um, if you haven't seen my tutorial on sculpting a cute nose, it's essentially the same kind of planes that I'm establishing here. So if you want to go and look at that tutorial, it's specifically for uh, sculpting noses. So that's the same thing that I'm doing here. I'm just kind of looking at it, kind of sculpting it in and everything like that. All right, so the first, uh, the first uh, thing that we're going to hone in is a basic mouth. So we're going to try to get this mouth to look a little bit better. Of course, I am going to jump around the model and uh, try to, you know, make sure everything looks good with the mouth. But this is essentially what I'm doing now is I'm just establishing a pretty decent looking mouth. All right. So the video is going to be slowed down here so that we can establish what I'm doing. All right. So right now I'm using the clay brush and I'm kind of just building in these planes manually. I didn't like the original mouth and the way it looked, so I'm using the clay brush to kind of like even out the surface and get me uh, a little bit more planes to work with. And now I'm using the draw brush to kind of build out volumes. And we'll be going a little bit over the lip volumes in a little bit. But right here, I'm just kind of establishing the volume, kind of establishing the look of the mouth. As it bridges the, or as it as it kind of comes up towards the center of the mouth, um, the mouth is going to come forward a little bit more. So it's going to create that kind of facial structure. As it gets to the center of the lips, it's going to come further away from the face more. Um, right here, we're building in the muscles where that area is. Um, and the, of course we, you know, we're trying to get the volumes in the chin as well. Not too much volume, just enough to where it's appealing. Like we did with the body, you don't want to push the silhouette too much. You just want to make sure that it's established and it's not, um, overdone. Okay. The philtrum, we're trying to make that look a little bit better. Uh, it's supposed to be a lot more thinner, but a little bit later on we'll, uh, We'll, we'll go over all of that. Okay, trying to, again, establish the shape of the lips from the inside. How do I want the lips to look? Right here, I noticed that the lip shape is a little off. Um, it's very weird looking. So I go in and I try to fix the side view. Again, we're going to be doing some draw overs of all of the stuff that I'm doing right now. Um, again, pushing in the inner corners of the bottom lip to make sure that that top lip always looks like it's overlapping the, the bottom lip. Again, you can see me jumping around from the entire face. You know, I'm not just staying on the mouth. I'm also going to different parts of the face. This is uh, something that I do because when I... When I look at the mouth too much, then I then I'm only looking at the mouth and I'm like, okay... Uh, I did this a little bit too weird uh, compared to the rest of the anatomy. So I always want to go in and I always want to try to make sure that I'm sculpting things in according with, 
you know, the area around the mouth. So does the the mouth look good with the nose? Does the mouth look good with the outer cheeks? Does the nose look good with the mouth? You know, things like that that I'm always thinking about as I'm sculpting. And uh, this is me doing that right now. I'm like, okay, the nose really isn't catching my eye when it comes to like looking at it while I'm looking at the mouth. So I'm going to try to make it look pretty decent as I'm sculpting uh, the mouth. I'm going to try to make them work together. And I am like trying to get that kind of like button nose look. You know, um, I don't want to make the nose too small, but I also don't want to make it look too manly. So I'm trying to get like a nice medium in between. Again, we're kind of like thinning out that filtrum, making it a little bit uh, thinner. Because uh, when you make the filtrum a little bit too big, it starts to look manly. So I'm trying to make sure that all of these things stay petite, stay small, um, and stay stylized as well. I don't want it to be overdone realism. I just want it to be, you know, cute, appealing kind of faces. All right, so here we are with the, the Cupid's bow draw over. This is where your uh, shapes are going to come in. It's going to be the filtrum is going to be the most prominent. Um, it's going to kind of look like a Cupid's bow. Um, and then, of course, the bottom lip is going to be like the string that you're pulling from the Cupid's bow. Um, then we're going to be switching the color over to pink. Um, this is going to be the lip volume right here. You're going to have two volumes on the bottom of the lip. Okay, those are going to be the most prominent. Um, and then you're going to have, obviously, a space in the center. And then you're going to obviously have your filtrum volume on the top or lip, upper, upper lip area where it's going to be the most prominent. And then you're going to have your two volumes on the side. These are not going to be as big, but they are still noticeable features in the lips in some people. So it all depends on what you're doing with the face. Um where you could take that muscle structure and you can kind of push it and make it look better. Okay. So I think from the side view, it is also like the eyes where it's a kind of lemon shape, but I also like to kind of make sure that the lips uh, from, well, this is how it's established from this angle. These are the points of uh, interest. Like you have the top lip, you have the bottom lip, obviously that are points of interest. And of course, as you can see, um, the top lip and the bottom lip, they kind of look like a, a lemon wedge, just like the eyes. And obviously the top lip is, uh, you know, overlapping the bottom lip. So here I am drawing the lemon wedge shape with the pink. Um, as you can see, it's kind of like a lemon wedge. Uh, so make sure that you're doing like those points of interest where, you know, obviously you don't have to do it exactly perfectly like me, um, or all the time in the same way. Um, that's the great thing about faces is they're always different. All right. So now we're going to be moving on to the eyes and we're going to be kind of blocking in the eyes with a basic shape. And then again, we're going to do the draw overs for the eyes to make sure that, um, you know, you, you kind of get an idea as to what they look like when you're sculpting them and, and how you should continue to sculpt them. All right. So the first thing that I do, obviously, is I, I establish, um, the fat folds above the eyes, I kind of like try to figure out where that's going to sit. So that's going to sit around in this area up above, right below the brows, up above the cheeks. Um, and it's going to kind of fill in this kind of area right here. And then I'm trying to establish with that where the eyes are going to sit. All right. So usually it's about five eyes, I believe, in between the heads. Some people say six, but I believe it's five, you know, one in the center, two on the sides, and then um, a half of one on each side to finish it off. And I'll get a, a representation of that right now. Um, but yeah, it's usually about five eyes. With stylized characters, I believe that it could be uh, different. Um, but here I am kind of like, you know, shaping in these areas, these uh, very, very basic shapes first where the lids are going to be. Um, so here's one point of change. Uh, here's the side. Here's the tear duct. And that's essentially where you kind of want to go with your initial setup with that. All right. So here, the um, almond shape of the eyes, if you're doing a more anime female, they're going to be more almond shaped. As they're getting into the tear ducts, they're going to kind of swerve in. Um, and as they get closer to the outer part on the bottom lip, they're going to kind of bow downwards. Um, and that's just because where the pupil is sitting, or excuse me, where the iris, where that main like eye bump is. So I also try to make sure that it's wrapping a little bit around the head just to make sure. And uh, 
you want to practice with this. Here I am pushing the tear ducts in a lot more because they are going to come in and then they're going to swerve out towards the nose area. Um, the, you're going to want to practice this a lot because you are going to like, you are going to have problems with it at first, but it's something that you need to practice over and over and over again to kind of figure it out. I'm still not 100 on it. You know, I still have a lot of problems with it, but I am, you know, getting better than I did, you know, a couple years ago where my eyes were just kind of awful. So, yeah. I still have a lot of anatomy learning to do. So here we are using the draw sharp to kind of establish where our tear ducts are going to be. Kind of drawing them towards the nose. You can draw them a little bit kind of more angular if you're going for more of a like stylized anime female. Um, and then now I'm just kind of establishing where the depth of those lids are going to sit. Um, again, this is all just kind of putting in landmarks to, you know, help me see what the shapes, what the, what the eye is going to kind of look like. It's almost like you're drawing in like old school pixels with how low res this, you know, the character is. All right. So now we're just kind of uh, adjusting the shapes of the eyes. Um, this is the fun part. Once you establish kind of like where, you know, you, you establish the outer part of the eye, the tear duct, you know, the other eye, uh, where, where that's going to change. Now comes the fun part of kind of just establishing the shapes of the eyes. You want to kind of like save iterations of this. So that way, if you do mess up, so let's say you like the mouth or you like where it's going, you know, you want to save an iteration of that off. So if you do mess up on the eyes or you do mess up on the nose, then you have something to go back to. And, you know, you're not just completely erasing it every single time um, and damaging your silhouette because, you know, every time you get something that you like, you want to make sure you maintain that silhouette because every time you damage that silhouette by going back and erasing something, you know, it's going to be harder to establish what you want. So... Um, make sure you're saving iterations that way, if you have a problem with it, you know, you can just say, okay, well, I just want to go back to where I finished the mouth at or go back to where I finished the nose at. All right. So I'm really liking the shape of these eyes, but I'm not liking certain angles of the eyes. And this is where a lot of like time is going to be put into, um, shaping the area around the eyes to kind of make them fit. How do I make them fit? From the front view, they look fine. But then from the side view and three-quarter, they look awful. Um, so how can I make these eyes fit at a three-quarter and uh, a side view without damaging the front? So here I am right here drawing the, the lemon wedge again. And again, the upper eyelid is on the outside is going to sit over the lower eyelid. So that's what you want to make sure that you're remembering. Okay? So... Again, I'm just kind of looking at it at three-quarter. I'm trying to like establish how am I going to make this look good from a three-quarter view? How am I going to look, make it look good from a side view without damaging the front? So I always want to make sure that I'm going back every time I'm moving it um, and checking my front view just to make sure that I'm not overdoing it and damaging what the front is going to look like. Again, also looking at weird angles. From this, I'm like kind of looking at like a three-quarter top view. And I'm kind of, you know, breaking down that surface in between the bridge of the nose and the eye. And we're moving the tear ducts up a little bit and out just to see if, like, maybe separating her eye would help. And I do, like, go in and I do, like, make her eyes slightly larger. If you use control with the pinch brush, it'll actually push outwards rather than pinch inwards. And that's really good for, like, kind of making, um, expanding the shape of things, you know, making them larger without actually, like, you know, moving them around everywhere. And my cheekbones are a little bit too sharp. And so I'm, like, now going in and I'm, like, starting to soften things down, um, and make sure that, you know, everything stays feminine, stays soft, um, and then starts to look right. See, like right now, it's starting to look like a dead mask. So I'm really trying to, like, get this, like, face established, you know, with the rest of the, the uh, head. So just very gentle, you know, brush strokes, very gentle strokes um, 
when you're sculpting very gentle changes so that way you're not completely overdoing it and making it look awful you know once you have something you like you want to kind of gently go in and you want to make sure that you know you're you're changing it ever so slightly not too much figure out what the problem is so my problem is is the transition between the upper fat and the her cheekbones that needs to be established a little bit more it needs to be filled in a little bit more um that was one of the main problems that was making her face look weird so i ended up actually doing that and filling it in and right now you can see here i am just kind of filling in the rest of it smoothing it down even reshaping the mouth just ever so slightly as I, you know, rested my eyes and started looking at the eyeballs. I'm like sitting there looking at the lips. And I'm like, okay, those don't look too good. So I need to change that. Here I am trying to build the eyes forward a little bit more. And I'm trying to make them curve a little bit more from a three quarter view. Yeah, just like the rest of this is like, you know, smoothing it, smoothing around the eye, you know, just very, very uh, delicately going in and um, changing things and, you know, making sure that the, you know, everything is flowing right. So here I am getting, um, you know, a larger grab brush and I'm kind of just expanding the eyes a little bit more outwards towards the cheeks to kind of fill in the brow to cheekbone area. Uh, pinch the lips a little bit just to see if I can get like a nice uh, supple kind of look with the lips. And I'm also pinching the nose just ever so slightly to see if like shrinking it down a little bit would help. Here I am making the eyes ever so slightly a little bit bigger. And, you know, if you do want to, like, go in and put eyeballs in right away so that it helps you with, you know, the size of the eyes and uh, the shape and everything, you can totally do that. I just do it this way because um, it's just more natural for me to kind of just go in and sculpt natural-looking eyes before I commit to the eyeballs being placed. It's just something that I do. I also wanted to kind of shave down the brows because I felt like they were just a little bit too strong. But, uh, yeah. It is, it is uh, very interesting. Like, I'm sitting here trying to kind of build down the nose a little bit, but I didn't like that. So I ended up uh, using the clay strips to kind of build out the volumes a little bit more. Um, didn't really like that too much either. It was just overdoing it a little bit too much. So... I ended up cutting back a little bit on that, and I think I used the inflation brush to um, help me with uh, building out those volumes a little bit more. Yeah, here's where I use the inflation brush, and I start to build out the volumes a little bit more for the nostrils. So this is where I would probably tell you, you know, take a break. You know, if you're having a problem, take a break. You know, um, come back with fresh eyes and see what you're doing wrong. Here, obviously, the tip of the nose is a little bit too thin, so I ended up building that out a little bit more um, to thicken up as, as large as the bridge of the nose because it was just way too thin. And uh, now I'm using the slide relax brush. Um, this brush does not work in multi-resolution, I found out. So don't use it with multi-resolution or else you'll have problems with the mesh. But yeah, I think we're, we have established a pretty decent, uh, you know, looking base to go off of. Um, 
And then in the next portion of this video, it'll be a time lapse of me just basically adjusting all of this stuff that we just did. Uh, I saved off an iteration. I went back and, you know, I kind of took a break from it because I was like, I don't know what I could do to make it look good. So I ended up taking a break. See, as I save it off, I take a break and then I come back to it. And here I am just now um, structuring the forms, you know, um, making it look more feminine, just building out volumes a little bit more um, and things like that. So you always want to kind of just take a break. If you feel like you don't know what's going on with it, take a break, come back to it and, you know, maybe you'll see what's wrong with it after you take just a, a little bit of a break. Maybe go watch a movie, maybe, you know, make yourself something to eat. Um, maybe look at somebody else doing artwork. That's one of my favorite things is to just watch people stream and do, you know, that kind of thing. So here I am establishing what the underneath of the nostril should look like and the philtrum shape. So those should be tucked underneath the nostrils going inside of the nose and the nostril should be feeding into that. So hopefully that'll give you an understanding as to how I see the nose when I'm making that kind of change. And now we're just, again, making very delicate changes to try to get that three-quarter view to look right, you know, looking at it from the front, looking at it from a three-quarter, you know, looking at those problem areas and trying to kind of hone in on them, you know, isolate the problem and then fix the problem before you go on to the rest of the sculpt. Um, this neck area, this neck area, I really wanted to touch up on, on this, uh, this video. Um, you want to kind of establish the trapezius going into, uh, kind of feeding into the collarbone area as well. Um, the neck isn't too far away from the back. It's very, very thin actually. So this is where I'm actually going in and I'm kind of doing a draw over of how you should be seeing the the head right so it's uh the back of the head obviously is feeding into the neck and then the trapezius is feeding back behind that and then you have obviously the neck muscles going in towards the sternum and you have the trapezius going in and feeding into the collarbone area this volume is going to be kind of the same width as the neck okay you're gonna have a little bit of a slope on the neck all right so make sure you're making that kind of like trapezius to the collarbone slope and then you want to kind of build in these kinds of volumes right here, all right? I just wanted to make sure that I got that inside the video so that way people weren't confused as to how the, the neck should be. Um, and here we are kind of just building out the skull, all right? This is, again, this is not going to be the final look of the mesh, all right? It's going to go through some iterations, you know? The more I work on it, the more I'm going to see problems with it. Even now, I could probably go and do some you know, some more editing to the eyes, maybe kind of change the placement of the eyes a little bit, see where we're at with that. But right now we're just kind of establishing the basic forms so that, you know, I have something to work on. Um, and I'm not just kind of just going with the first thing that I sculpt. All right, so this is what I mean by the transition of the the fat underneath the eyes to the cheekbone. I'm kind of building that in just to make sure that it's uh, it's built in, you know, that it's actually transitioning pretty well. Changing the mat cap. All right, so I wanted to thank my patrons, uh, my patrons for supporting me. Um, thank you guys so much. And if you would like to be a patron, um, the link will be in the description. I want to say... Uh, thank you so much. I wouldn't have been able to do this without you guys. All right. Um, hopefully you guys learned a little bit in this video. If you do have any questions, please, please ask. If you have any problems, please ask, because I do want to touch up on any problems that you guys might have with these videos or with the sculpting process or anything like that. All right. So I'll see you guys in the next video um, where we'll be doing the hands and hopefully the feet afterwards. Um, and then we'll be putting it all together to retopologize it. And then we will be refining that sculpt, the retopologized sculpt, um, to make textures, to bring over to Substance Painter so that we can start on the, the painting process. All right. And we also need to do the unfolds, uh, the UVs. All right. So thank you guys and uh, stay tuned for the next video.